Okay. Uh, number one, we have a sequence 1, 16, 11, 16. The first question, A, G, or N just means arithmetic, geometric, or neither. So from 1 to 6, looks like I added 5, and I added 5 again, added 5 again. I can I continually add 5, so that means this first one is arithmetic. So if it's arithmetic, we have a common difference, not a ratio. That common difference was 5. We were going up 5. So the next three terms, after 16, if you add 5, you get 21. Then you get 26, and then you'd get 31. The 15th term, then, um, probably going to be best to create our equation. So a sub n equals our first term, which was 1, plus our n minus 1 times our uh, 5 is our d. Now, because I'm looking for the 15th term, I could right now, before I even simplify, I could go ahead and plug in 15. We could have simplified that first if we wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and jump or drop the 15 in right now. So 15 minus 1 is 14. 14 times 5 is 70. So that would mean we have 1 plus 70, which of course is 71. Sum of the first 10 terms. So we're going to take n, which is 10, times our first term. Plus, we need to know the 10th term. I guess we haven't found the 10th term yet. We should find that quickly, maybe off to the side here. First term, 10 minus 1 times our d, which is 5. So 10 minus 1 is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. Plus 1 is 46. So that 10th term is 46. So we have uh, 46 plus 1 is 47. We're going to multiply that by 2, or sorry, divide that by 2 rather. And then we will multiply that answer by 10. We get 235. I just did that on the calculator. Got 235. Number 2. Uh, looks like we're multiplying by 3 over and over again. That means it's geometric. Uh, so we have a common ratio, uh, which was 3. The next three terms, eight, 81 times 3 is 243. Uh, then 243 uh, times 3, we get 729. And then we multiply that by 3, we get 2,187. So for the 15th term, so we'll take our first term, which was 3 times r, which is also 3, to the power of 15 minus 1, or 14. So on the calculator, I'll let you see calculators I do this one. 3 times 3, and then just raise that 3 to the power of 14. Please do not multiply 3 times 3 to make a 9. You have to do order of operations. Exponent first, the calculator knows that. So it gives us our answer, which is really large. Um, we get 1,434,000. Oh, nope, nope, I was my comma was off. Looks like it's maybe fourteen million. Fourteen million three hundred and forty eight thousand nine hundred and seven. So now the sum of the first ten terms, I need to know what the first uh, let's see. Well, I could know what the tenth term is, but we have the two formulas we can choose between here. We know uh, a sub one is three. We know what r is, that was 3. We also know what n is here, which is 10. So we could use the formula that uses those three things um, as opposed to using uh, the other formula where you have to find a sub n. So it's going to be easier to use the formula. I'll re rewrite it here. a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the n over 1 minus r. That's going to be the formula I choose to use on this problem. So a sub 1 was 3 minus 3 times r, which is 3 to the 10th power, over 1 minus r, which is 3. I'm going to put parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator. I'll type that in. So parentheses, 3 minus 3. You can't really see that real well. Sorry about that. Um, times 3 to the power of 10. I'm done with the numerator. Close parentheses, divide by parentheses 1 minus 3. We get an answer of 88,572.
Okay, now write an equation. So we should recognize on number three, uh, it does, I guess it does tell us it's an arithmetic sequence. Um, so we take our first term, which is 16, plus n minus 1 times d, which is what we're increasing by. In this case, we're decreasing by 4, so it's a negative 4. I do need to take and distribute that negative 4. So minus 4n plus 4. So I do have like terms. I have a negative 4, and then 16 plus 4 makes a 20. So negative 4n plus 20 would be the answer. Okay, number four, still arithmetic. So first term, we don't know our first term. We have to work backwards to find it. So here's what I'm going to think about as I find my first term. Thinking about this equation, where I know the 16th term is 52. So I'm going to put 52 down for a sub n. And as I do that, as I put the 52 there, that's the 16th term, so I put 16 in for n. Additionally, I know that d is 5. I can solve this now to figure out what a sub 1 is. So I have 16 minus 1 is 15. 15 times 5 is 75. And then I'll subtract 75 from 52 to get negative 23. So now I know a sub 1. So now I can come back and use that in the problem. Negative 23 plus n minus 1 times d, which is 5. I'll distribute the 5. Five. 5n, negative 5. So a sub n equals 5n minus 28. So let's go ahead and then look at that next section. Number five is a geometric sequence. Um, it doesn't tell us the first term on number one. Here's the formula we use. So if we don't know, if we know the second term here on number five, um, really I don't need to use the formula. I think I can work backwards pretty easily since I know the second term. It tells us R, we're multiplying by two. So to get from the first term to the second term, I multiplied by 2, and I ended up at 6. So it's pretty easy to work backwards to see what a sub 1 is. Some number multiplied by 2 gives me 6. That number had to be 3. So 3 was the first term. So I'll use that in the formula. 3 times your r, which is 2, to the power of n minus 1. That's the answer to that equation. Don't multiply 3 times 2 to make a 6. Okay, number six, we know a sub one this time. We don't know what r is though. This is where I like to write it out. So the first term is three, second term I don't know, the third term is 12. This is geometric, so if I'm multiplying by a number, we'll call it r, and then we do it again. So I started at three, I multiply by r twice, or multiply by r squared, and end up at 12. I can figure out what this is. Divide by 3, r squared is 4, so r has to be 2. So, you can plug that into the formula. So 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. Right, let's take a look at the back page. Determine if it's convergent or divergent. Um, so, looks like we are um, uh, multiply. sorry, it does tell us, so it tells infinities, doesn't tell us arithmetic or geometric, but we only looked at infinite series on geometric, so it must be geometric, and I, if I look at the problem, I see that yes, in fact, I am multiplying by 3, so you want to find that ratio, you want to find out what you're multiplying by, it's 3, if that's larger than 1, it's divergent, so number 7 is divergent. Number eight, from one term to the next. If you're unsure because of these decimals what that r is, anytime you want to find an r and it's not obvious, take the second term 
and divide it by the first term. So take point 0 0.01, divide it by point 0.1, and you get point 0.1, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is less than 1, making it convergent. So now number 9 and 10, we need to find the sum if it exists. We need to first find out if it's convergent or divergent. So we know what to do. Number 9, uh, it's going down in value. We've got to figure out what that R value is. So I could take 360, it's the second term, divided by 480, the first term. The very first thing I do is I simplify that fraction to strike the zeros off the end. Think of it as 36 over 48. Then I could recognize that they're both divisible by 12. 36 divided by 12 is 3. 48 divided by 12 is 4. So I get 3 fourths. That is less than 1. Because it's less than 1, I do know that it is, in fact, convergent. So there is an answer. So we want to remember our formula. Um, so we've got... Uh, let's see, our first term is 480 divided by 1 minus r, so 1 minus 3 fourths. I'm going to put parentheses around that as I type that in the calculator. So 480 divided by parentheses, 1 minus 3 fourths. I get 1,920. Number 10. If you're not certain what that, is, what that R value is, you would not be alone. So let's think about the first term, or the second term rather, which is 1 sixth. Divide it by the first term, which is 1 half. Now if I'm dealing with fraction and division, it's best to think of it as m multiplying by the reciprocal. So we started with 1 sixth. We still have 1 sixth. But instead of dividing by 1 half, I can multiply by the reciprocal of 1 half. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1. Multiply straight across, you get 2 over 6, but that simplifies to 1 third. 1 third is the R value, so that's less than 1. It is convergent. There is a sum, so I can do the formula. So we do 1 half over 1 minus 1 third. I'd really recommend using the calculator on this one. Parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator. So 1 half divided by 1 minus 1 third, giving us 0.75 or 3 fourths. All right, then we get into um, the more recent section, the section from Friday. Find the first five terms. Well, we know the first term. It tells us it's 10. A sub 1 is 10. The second term, which is really A sub 2. So you're going to take, let's look at the rule now. To find the next term, take the term you know. You're going to take 4 times that number plus 1. So I'll take 4 times the last term, which was the 10. 4 times 10 plus 1. 4 times 10 is 40, plus 1 is 41. So my first term was 10, second term is 41. The third term then, take 4 times the previous term, which was now 41. Oops. And I believe this is a problem we had on our assignment on Friday. Um, so 4 times 41 plus 1, we get 165. So there's three terms. We need the fourth term now. 4 times that term, 165, and we'll add 1. We get 661. And then lastly, the fifth term, 4 times that answer, plus 1. We get 2,645. So there's the first five terms. Number 12. First term is negative 9. 
Second term, it says take 2 times that previous term, so negative 9. And we'll add 8 to that. Oops. So we're going to get negative 18 plus 8 is negative 10. A sub 3, we take 2 times that, plus 8. So we get negative 20 plus 8 is negative 12. Fourth term, take 2 times negative 12, plus 8. So negative 24 plus 8 is negative 16. And then lastly, the fifth term, 2 times the negative 16, plus 8 is negative 32, plus 8 is negative 24. <coughs> Negative 9, negative 10, negative 12, negative 16, negative 24. So make the first five terms. 13 and 14, we work backwards. Write the recursive rule. So recursive rule, you have to tell what a sub 1 is. a sub 1 is 21. Then write what a sub n minus n plus 1 is, rather. Write what the next term is. The next term, what are we doing? Well, it looks like I'm decreasing by 7 over and over again. So I'm taking a sub n, and I'm subtracting 7. There's my recursive rule. Number 14, I know my first term is 4, so we indicate that. Then what do we do to get the next term? Looks like I'm multiplying by negative 3, so I'm taking negative 3 times a sub n. Then 15 and 16, we're finding the iterates. That's where you plug in. So we have an initial term of, initial value of 4. So you're, to get your first iterate, to get x sub 1, you take that initial value of 4 and you just plug it in. So plug it into the function, so 12 times 4 plus 8. So 48 plus 8 is 56. So 56 is my first iterate. So then for x sub 2, I plug in 56. 12 times 56 plus 8, 680. And then the third iterate, plug in that number, plug in 680. So 12 times 680, plus 8. We get 8,168. Number 16, we'll do the same thing. It's negative 9 times, and then plug in your initial value, which it tells us x sub 0 is negative 6. So plug in negative 6. Negative 9 times negative 6 plus 1 gives us 55. x sub 2, take negative 9 times that value. And add 1. Get negative... 494. And the third iterate, negative 9 times that value, and add 1. Ah. We get 4,447.